Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity 2. Leave now, to me. we have just explored this place and there's still so much more to explore. Apparently this like city is massive. I heard things online, people saying it took them like eight hours to get through. I don't see if that, that's the case, but we have I have realized we've been here three hours, so maybe it is the case. I don't know, it's a big city. Anyway, uh, have we been up? Did we go up there? I think Not we even my Vithrak, darling. Oh no, we can, we have to go around this way. Ten minutes of falsetto. Okay, let's Perk head around this way. See what we've got up there. Okay. Anything going on? Oh, uh, well, maybe we did go up here. Yeah, it's the upper mirror, top floor. Yeah, we saw there were commoners and then we left. What's this? A district home? We can just go in the top. All right, sure. Let's see what we got. Apparently, yeah. Oh wait, I think I talked about this already. I did miss a home somewhere. That's fine. Uh, in Port Magie, but that's fine. I do want to get rid this of the trap because I want the XP. Then I'm kind of interested in what's there. in there. What did I tell you? Uh, I don't really want any of that. I just wanted to break in. Yeah. Okay. Let's leave. Yeah. Fairly easy. Fairly easy. Also, apparently, you don't need to go stealth to get uh, proper perception checks anymore, so we don't need to go stealth pretty much ever. Right, so we've been here, 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 into that house. Okay, so I think we're going to the Luminous Adramil and Sansa's Map Emporium. Okay, let's head up this way first. All right. Shh. Keep your voices down, my cullies. What is going on down here? Hello? What are you doing? You want something? Nope, they're just saying something. That's fine. Anything else we can grab here? Ooh, we can have that I stuff. This. I nice. got it. Ooh. So we got... Arak. That's fine. This one... Yeah, just some more random stuff. Might as well pick it up. We can always sell everything later. I don't think we have a weight limit. No can so we're do. Good. Yeah. In fact, I don't think there's even a concept The Queen is holding weight. court today with the Valians and Rawatians. How long before they're killing each other? Wager on it? Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, the other one is, apparently our tactics don't work unless we have some sort of behavior set up that's like a bug right now. Um, I mean, there was just an update to the game, so it could be outdated information. But what I might do is I might set up a whole bunch of basic tactics anyway. Like, things we want them to do no matter what, like... Probably, hmm? if Edir is surrounded by three enemies, switch to Defender Stance. If not, switch to Warrior Stance. Something like that. Things that are fairly simple that really I don't need to micromanage. Like, the, these ones as well, like, we could probably set up those abilities on a, a timer. Like, modals seem like the perfect hmm? one, because we just want them to switch in between them. Anyway, uh, Map Emporium. Let's see what's in here. I imagine maps. Are you asleep? Easy does it. The dog can see us, can he? Oh yeah, the dog can totally see us. Well, that's fine then. What's this one? That's also stealing. No, I don't want any of that, but Damn I just it. want to see what it was. Right, so we got a lot to look at around the sides as well. This is all stealing. Okay, fine. Uh, these maps of the Deadfire Archipelago are incomplete, packed with gaps denoting unexplored regions. Scrawled notes track commissions and work orders in progress. Tattered and worn, this map depicts a small region of the living lands. Among the, un among the usual cartographical tomes are, and manuals are a few weathered volumes of travel memoirs and fanciful adventures. And then, the top one, even these scrolls have been painstakingly dusted. Okay, here's my call. Here's my call. Either Sansa is a companion, which seems very unlikely, or he's going to give us jobs to go map out unexplored areas and tell him what's there. That's that's, that's what, what I think he's going to do. Anyway, hello. Oh, hello. Welcome to my shop. It's such a pleasure to see a new face. Sansa bounces back on his heels, a wide grin plastered on his worn face. He looks still looks like he's asleep to me. How might I assist you? What do you do here? Oh, I am a cartographer. I make maps. I'm not half bad at it either. And may the gods forgive my immodesty for saying so. If you need a map of any settled region of the Deadfire, I am your man. 
and my commission rates are quite generous. It used to be I would take to the sea and do a bit of charting myself, but I haven't the time. Too many maps need making. A shame, too. There's a whole swath of the dead fire I've yet to see. I'm quite keen to write a book, in fact. Oh, but I won't trouble you about that. Excuse my nattering on, won't you? You're writing a book? I'm putting together an explorer's account of the dead fire. Or at least the part of it Queen Onekaza's tribe has laid claim to. My book will be the first of its kind. The Explorer's Club will go mad for it. Or, well, that was the idea. It's a fiercely dangerous enterprise, in point of fact, and nobody will agree to char the islands for me. You'd think ship captains would be a bold-hearted bunch. I offered fair recompense. Sansa <sighs> folds his arms, sighing. I'm not exactly the most powerful fighter, or I do it all myself. Still, wouldn't it be wonderful? An explorer's guide to the dead fire. Someday. I've got a bold heart and a ship. Need a hand? Do you mean it? This is... Wow! I can't thank you enough! Seraphin and Zoti liked it. It's a lot of ground. I mean, water to cover. And some of these islands are in very dangerous waters. Despite his words, the gleeful expression on Sansa's face has not faded. Don't worry, I planned it all out. We'll get your feet wet first. With a little experience under your belt, I'm sure you'll get a taste for it. Nothing will stop us. I mean, you. The idea is to explore all the islands that haven't been charted yet, or even named. That falls to you, Aimiko. You can't tell me you've never wanted to name your own island. I thought we could start with the waters around the company outpost at Port Maje. There are two islands in the region. And nobody's taken much notice of them yet. Once you're back, I'll start filling in my map and adding your findings to the book. Oh, this will be wonderful. Oh, fantastic. So he did give us the quest. Ahoy, Captain. Uh, if I could bend your ear a moment, uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. That's an odd time, Seraphim. Anyway, a furred hand at his belly and one heel out, he bows deeply, drooping ear almost touching the ground. You run a tight shop. And you ain't no terrible person, neither. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. Tell me about the gentleman of leisure. The gentleman is only the finest ship among the Principi, and Captain Ferrante, our most respected shipmaster. It were two honours and an half to be chosen to join his crew. I detect a button there. Aye, you ain't wrong. Joining the gentleman meant leaving a sorcerer. Leaving the only family I've ever known. Family? I never knew no kin to the sorcerer. They be my salt family. And to me, that be better far than blood. So, I, I guess the reason he was willing to join his crew and leave ours was because he didn't like it there? Anyway, what, let's ask him, why? I don't sell yourself a suole short cap, nor me neither. I know an opportunity when I board it. He chuckles. I'd seen what there were to be seen upon the gentleman, learn what ropes were to be learned. Methinks a watcher after a dead god will uh, thrust me into an old new set of eye openings. Thoughtful. Zoti rubs a knuckle against the edge of her jaw. I think that's a good sign. And believe you me, I do appreciate myself a good thrust. He grins. The faint trace of a smile, Zoti's eyes gleam with dark amusement, but Loth did not like it. Well, you're welcome. I've a uh, gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Malnaj would have snatched it had I not found a perfect hiding spot. Where did you hide it? I oh, know were I to tell you that, you mightn't want it no more. Seraphin gives an innocent whistle while scratching his ass as subtly, subtly as one could scratch it. Uh-huh, Eddie and Zoti liked it. <laughs> Just a jest, Cap. Nay, I tucked it away in my beard. Didn't wear braids back then. So my hair caught about everything from feathers to fish bones. Malnar shook me down for plunder after each raid. And I figured out she wouldn't go nowhere near my beard. Said my face were like a saw rip fetish. So why did Malnar, was that Malnia, treat you so badly? Don't really know for sure, Cap. Thought at first she wanted me. Lasses be that way sometimes, treating you worse the more they fancy you. Given she tried to get me killed twice within our first fortnight together. I thought mayhap she were in deepest love. He chuckles quietly. Again, Eddie and Zoti love it. Um, 
Were you attracted to her? Didn't fancy her in the least. But a man has needs. And I figured at the time that she were as wet as any other lass. Figured I'd give her a whisper about what we might get down to in the old. Her answer were an unequivocal no made with a uh, sharpness. Might have been the closest I've ever been to death. He winces and rubs his throat. Well, thank you for the gift, Seraphin. You be entirely welcome. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've round about reached my limit for sentiment. Seraphin salutes, grinning broadly and turns away. So we got the Cypher Shackle. Plus one constitution. Gatter chains, resistance to dexterity affliction. Interesting. All right. What slot does it? Is a neck slot. Okay, so we'd, ha we'd have to get rid of our protective charm. We could give it to Seraphin, but that seems a little rude. Does anyone have a neck item? I mean, a loth doesn't have a neck item. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. The woman who recently wore the shackle came from an enigmatic tribe of the Pale Elves. Little is known about her people, save that at some point her village was sacked by roving slavers and she was taken to the Deadfire. Aboard the slave ship, she was compliant but silent. Her captors were horrified to discover the woman's mouth had been wired shut, presumably as a child. Then she touched their minds. He travels southward. Watch the sky. Uneased, the slavers fettered the woman's neck with an iron address shackle they reserved for captured ciphers and did their best to ignore her. When the ship arrived in the dead fire, the slavers dropped anchor with several illicit merchant vessels to offload their kith cargo. When the woman was called to the auction block, she spoke into her prisoner's minds, despite the binding collar. Aethis sneers. He will end it. Then she vanished. All that remained were the shackles. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. You know what I think I'm going to do? I am going to give this charm to Loth, and then I'm going to wear the new one. Because it was a gift, and we shouldn't just give it away without using it. Great fetching. Yeah, and the Loth likes sure. it. That's good. Let's head out of here and go to the Luminous Adra. Was it company, or was it just a warehouse, or something like that? I forget what the last word was. Luminous Adra Mill. Ah, there we go. Well, head in. Right. I'm assuming that day and night doesn't matter. Like, it didn't matter in the first game, but... You know, we'll see. At least I don't think it mattered in the first game. Don't quite remember. Anyway. Head through here. Cortina. Hello. Cortina's voice finds you before she does. Her barks of laughter and cheerful directives resounding throughout the mill. She flits from worker to worker, offering critique and approval. When she finally spots you, a shadow of apprehension passes over her face. He hides it with a toothy grin. If you are here about the taxes, tell the queen. Oh, you are not the tax collector. She narrows her eyes, her hand twitching at the hilt of her blade. What business brings you to my mill? Who are you? Ke? Cortina leans in close, one prestigiously uh, furry eyebrow raised. You go around asking just anyone in Queen's birth personal questions, maybe you end up dead in a ditch. Have caution, eh? Never. Lucky for you, I am a woman of honor. He gives you a sunny smile and claps her hands together. I direct luminous milling for the Valian Trading Company. It's a nice job, eh? And I'm quite good at it. You want to know more? I need a drink first, per guano. Per guano. A valian phrase meaning for the good. Cortina claps you on the shoulder, a playful smile on her lips. What do you do here? Cortina looks about the room with an exaggerated wonder, her green eyes wide. She laughs a little to herself and runs a finger across the arm of the chair beside her. She holds the finger up for your inspection, caked in shimmering blue dust. We mill luminous, of course. Take big chunks, break into smaller chunks, crush into dust-sized chunks. Per complanquenet, it is really not so complicated. It gives you a condescending little pat on the arm. We'll see ya. Good day. Well, I mean, might as well have a look around. I'm gonna go to the rooftop balcony first. See what we got out there. Anything exciting? Imagining a balcony on the rooftop, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, it is. 
a wet dog. Hello, wet dog. You are our wet dog now. Abraham. Reduces recovery penalty for armor. Varies by armor type. Interesting. This actually seems like a very, very powerful one. What's our current one? Plus two insight, one metaphysics. So this one's probably better for walking around, but Abraham seems great for combat. Yeah. Especially if we want to wear, like, a lot of higher value armor. That seems like it would work out very well for us. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what have we got here? Daily arrivals and deliveries of crude and refined luminous advert are carefully logged here. Oh. I did, did lick on the button. That was entirely my mistake. I will endeavor not to click on the button again. So we've already talked to Cortina, right? Ah, here. What business? Yeah. Bring good day. As she said, here we are again. Yeah, sure. I was just meaning to. I, what I did there is I meant to click back, so we would it would cancel the uh, previous uh, command, but that's fine. Uh, these shards, these crude shards of luminous adver retain their unearthly glow. Okay, anything back here? Nope, just a way out. Well, might as well take it. That seems fun. Right, are we finished in area number one? One of at least four? I think we have. Let's have a look here. Ooh, we can have that one. Yeah, nice. be right there. So let's see. We've been up here, along there, down there. We, so do you want to go north? Uh, east? Or do we want to go south? Well, it doesn't matter, because whichever way we go is going to give us the world map. So let's go this way, because it's quickest. Yeah, east exit. Oh, wow, that looks cool. Wait, some areas are locked. What's that mean? Are we just not allowed to go there? I guess we're not allowed to explore any more of the place. Or maybe that's because that's the entrance we took. So if I went north, we could go to... Pariki's Overlook? Maybe. Uh, so it's capital city. The religions are Helia, Ondra, Magrin, and Berath. So the four who were the most reasonable in our conversation earlier. So they do wheat. Uh, they import wheat, cotton, leather, silk, marble, thief, and white leaf. And then they export palm oil, rice, cocoa, pearls, teak, fruit, and luminous adra. They have a limited monarchy, which is ruled by Queen... Onakazi, or Onakaza the second, is mostly Amawa, then ocean, then coastal Amawa. So Amawa are at least, what, 73% here? Yes, that's a lot. Okay, wow. Yeah. There's only 9% um, that aren't either an ocean folk or an Amawa. Yeah, okay. Pretty good. Oh, and we can see it gives us a list of our ships, but we only have one. Does that imply we can buy more? Oh, well, that's cool. Right, I'm like, kind of, I don't know. Where do we want to go? Let's go to the gullet first. Yeah, sure. Let's go to the gullet. We can go to the other ones later. Fine. I'm not really too worried. We're going to explore it all. So, we might as well have a look around. You leave the bustle of the crowds behind, making your way along the winding path to the gullet. Colloquially called the Gullet, the slums of Nikitaka are home to both the Roparu caste of the city's Huana, as well as myriad colourful and unsavoury figures, built in a great chasm at the heart of Nikitaka. It is where much of the city's refuge, literal uh, and figurative, come to rest. For a time, the path ascends to the mountain. Even so, the cramped walls and run-down Huana buildings close in around you, obscuring your view. You come to a dark passage, cutting through the mountain, just wide enough to accommodate a wagon. The path here descends steadily into the rock face. After a lengthy journey through the dimly lit tunnel, you come to the gates of the gullet. The stench hits you first, a foul mixture of rot, stale air, and bodily odours. You notice the guardsman pushing a cart heaped high with, molder with mouldering food, which must account for some of the smell. 
Ahead, the homes of the gullet emerge as a collection of lights amid the darkness. You hear the rush of water below, and a frigid breeze wafts up from the unseen depths like an exhalation. Oh, that's it. I was kind of expecting more. Ooh, the gullet. Look at this. Okay. Let's go. Cool. Let's see what else we got around here. Let's see if what we got around here. So we got a beggar. Traveler, have you any food? Surely you've a scrap to spare. Yeah, sure. A gaunt Raparu woman grabs through her leg. She paws at you with a weak grip. Finger is bone thin and trembling. Mercy, traveler. Never have I been so hungry. Um. Well, let's ask her, does she have no access to food? Always there is prize share. The pile has grown leaner these years. Prize share, a Huana term referring to the distri distribution of wealth. Little falls to our pile that is not rotten or sour from this week and maybe before. What do you mean? She shakes her head. Forgive me, I say too much. If you would know more, ask Inoi. So I'm guessing the way it's meant to work is the Raparu do a lot of the, you know, labor stuff. And the people higher up then do all the administration stuff and all that. And how it's meant to work is that the administration people then give a large amount of stuff, or like food and all, all the necessary bits to the Raparu people in like this prize share as they're putting it. And then all the Raparu people get a portion of that. Oh, and then a, yeah, and then that's how it works. But what's happened recently is that administrators have been keeping more of it. Reasons why? Probably they're not just evil. I imagine it's going to be a kind of grey answer where actually they're they're eating quite well. They don't realize how things bad things are for the Raparu, or it's not, or it is making it and it's getting cut off beforehand, or they're running out of money or something like that. Anyway, our elder listens to those in need, and he speaks out of earshot of the guards. So there are guards down here making sure that they stay in line. Okay, or stay in their cast, I assume. And I guess the elder is trying, like, tries to give more to those in need. So he's trying to bypass the guards. He's there. In the house to the right when you cross the bridge. He can speak of the hunger. Her quavering arm points towards the southeast. The Raparo touches two gaunt knuckled fingers to her lips. Who's the leader around here? He chuckles darkly. <laughs> the gullet is a lawless place. Forgotten. The only authority here is the Matarus, and they don't work on our behalf. But if it is a wise man you want, seek Anoy in his home. He tries to keep us safe and fed. He does not always succeed, but he does try. Trying's worth a lot down here. Okay. Well, here's some food. The woman snatches the food from your hands with surprising speed, eyes darting a glance for any onlookers before she shoves it between her teeth. She gnaws desperately, swallows, chokes, chews again, and speaks with her mouth half full from the next bite. Thank you. I'll share it, I swear. Thank you, traveler. We're gonna walk away. Okay, so we learned a little bit about the place here. We got, we got some food. It's fine. A lot of street urchins. Raparu, street urchins, street urchins. What's this? Uh, Half-eaten food scraps litter the, pi litter the pile. A rancid stench rises from it. Even though it didn't pop up, it did actually pop up in our little chat log there. Or whatever it's meant to be. It's meant to be like a combat log, mostly. Grab that. Okay, some more random bits. Doesn't feel great stealing from these people, to be honest with you. Right, continue heading down. Raparu. What have we got here? Uh, sweet incense masks the odor of the offerings, rotten fruit, and spoiled fish. Was this this is the narrows? So that's another section. There's. We should probably go to Enoy's house, but I'm gonna go to the narrows first. See what's in there. You enter a dim alleyway that reeks of urine er, and torch smoke. A long passage stretches to your left and right. Shadows move in the guttering torchlight, but though nothing more than shapes at this distance. 
The chatter and bustle of the gullet continues behind you. Okay, I'm going to go left. The tunnel ends, but another branch is off. The only sounds are the crackling of torches and steady drip of water. I'm going to go right. You turn to a door. It's solid as the stone around it with no handle and no knob. It's deathly quiet on the other side. You rap gently on the door and the sound echoes as if in a wide, empty space. Okay, turn around. Yes, yes, we're going to go left. We're now back at the start. I'm now going to go forward. You trudge along the darkened passage and reach an intersection. The tunnel branches off to the right. You hear a distant murmur of voices down the darkened path, but see no one. I'm going to go forward. On your left is an abandoned merchant stall, displaying cheap jewellery. The path continues ahead. Just inspect it. We'll do it. Laid out are various trinkets made from junk, necklaces strung with fish bones and shoe buckles, and bracelets made with shards of broken glass. But the curtain sways and flaps as if stirred by a draft. You twitch it aside and discover a secret passageway. Oh, and we needed 18 perception to hit that. Wow. Well, it's a good way of 22. On your left is an abandoned merchant stall displaying cheap jewellery. I'm going to go in behind the curtain. You check the tunnel one more time to make sure no one is watching, then you slip behind the curtain into another passageway. You walk along when several hooded figures materialize out of the darkness. Not so fast. You gotta pay the toll if you want to visit Delver's Row. Delver's Row. Somewhere beneath the gullet is a loose confederation of thugs, thieves, black marketers, and other seedy individuals known as Delver's Row. It's a place where most things can be found for the right price, and word always travels quickly. Hmm. Well, let's see what we want to do. We could try, let's try negotiating. Good folk, open markets are vital to a healthy economy. Would you turn away a paying customer? They look at each other and shrug. Uh, well, last time I came through there was a man with a scar and I paid him. Let's just try it. See if it works. They shrug and stand aside. It worked. Fantastic. You continue on and the rough stone changes to smooth cobbles under your feet. One lamplight shivers ahead as yellow and tremulous as fear itself. Before you is a narrow cavern that rives with shadows and echoes with the music of jingling coins. Let's enter Delver's Row. Okay. Well, I don't know where we're going, but... We're here now. Okay, I'm gonna do a little quick save. We don't we know nothing about this area. Okay. I assume that means we can't just travel freely, although it seems like we might be able to. And a wrap. An Orlin woman stands over a table laden with herbs and spices. She makes them without looking at her work, pausing now and then to raise up a sprig or file to her nose. You realize she is blind. It's the smell of cardamom that drew you, no? Oh, perhaps the sting of fresh pepper. Or maybe you seek something with a stronger bite. She swivels her ears, but her cloudy eyes do not find you. I need supplies. I have plenty. Though, if you're buying poison and ailment, mind you store them separate. Okay. I didn't really want supplies. I just wanted to see what she had. Um, I was also th thought that was the best option if she had any other dialogue. I think it's just the shop we found. Basically, like a shopping area. Okay, so she sells some things that we could need to pass skill checks, but we should mm -hmm. be alright. I got this. I'm gonna turn off fast mode while we travel through an area we know nothing about. What have we got here? A cutthroat thug, thug pirate? Okay. Pirate, thug, cutthroat, Roparo, street merchant. Okay, hello, street merchant. Looking for something to sharpen the senses? To help you leave your sorrows behind, I'll go what you need. Alright. So he sells drugs, mostly. Fair enough. Consider it done. Several paintings look identical, down to the signatures copied in the corner. Furtive whispers and footsteps rise from the lower street. Okay. Hey there. Let's Leave go it to right me. first, because it doesn't look like there's an awful lot along here. There's Rust. Who's Rust? With a furrowed brow, he glares at you, but says nothing. The name is 
Palxa. I know who you are. I make it my bag to keep my eyes on the new fish that end up in the gullet. Rats round here been whispering about you. Ooh, that's because we're shady? Oh, okay. I'm guessing you're looking to buy some art, yeah? He lightly traces a finger along the hilt of an emerald-encrusted stiletto hidden within the folds of a dark leather tunic. His narrowed eyes seem to dance in the magical light as the gemstone pulses with a caustic glow. The right half of his mouth ascends menacingly as he dips his head and peers at you from underneath his brow. Oh, if we were an assassin, we've got a very specific one. Or we can just ask him, we can just use our insight to go, you're an assassin. You're answered with a thin-lipped scowl as your words echo throughout the alley. Hmm. Would you be interested in joining my crew? Sorry, Bilger. I work alone. What sort of payment do you require for your services? Depends on the craftsmanship required. We don't know each other, so let's keep our dealings within the gullet, yeah? With a furrowed brow, he glares at you but says nothing. Let's see what kind of problems he, he, he could solve for us. Head swiveling side to side, he darts a cautionary glance. Then, shoulders straightening, he leans close to you. Go on. You smell the hint of ale in his breath as he nearly hit, hisses the words. Actually, I don't need anyone murdered at the moment. With a shrug, he leans back against the wall. Interesting. So if we need someone murdered, we know where to go. But generally, I think we're pretty good at that ourselves. Hey there. I got this. That's fine. What's up this way? The alley narrows to a dead end. Okay. So we got an assassin that we can hire. And potentially we could hire... If we hire him for small jobs in the gullet, we can then hire him for things outside. Not really our style, but it's possible. And what do we have here? Ooh, a button. So we can go even further in here thanks to our even better perception. Isn't this something? Okay. Then we got a thing we can steal right there. We're stealthy. What is it? Rubies? I don't know if I want to steal rubies. What other things? I see where oh, you're I want going to open that. If nothing else. There. What did I tell you? Yeah. What have we got? I don't really want that. Yeah. I mean, I know it's money, but I don't want to, I don't want Zoti to dislike us. Can I open this? This calls. Yeah, with some lock picks. A subtle touch. There. What did I tell you? Hey there. There's a bruiser right there. Just a quick save. Nice to see you too. Hey there. Sure. Oh, get out of there. Get out of there. Right here. Be right there. Get right out of there. I'll take a peek. Well, I mean, we could go in. Have a look. Uh, yeah, sure. actually, let's go in a little bit more straightforward. It might be a bad idea. I'm going to walk in with Eddie and Zoti. You are looking for something, Aimeko. Perhaps I have it. Oh, we could also go in that door. Well, that's fine. Or Nezo. We got a bunch of drunk guards and pirates. Okay. Hello, Inezo. Or Inezo. Ernezo has not seen you before. You must be new. New or very good at disguises. <laughs> the man chuckles. He peers at you through half-moon spectacles. His face is hidden beneath a thick but well-groomed beard. His eyes constantly dart between you and the doorway. But how did you hear about this place? Wait, no. Do not tell me. Sometimes it is better not to know. There is something I can get for you, yes? Tell me quietly. He leans in. I need supplies. Of course. Only do not tell anyone where you got them. Okay, so he has the Garari uh, Curus. Okay. That seems really good. 29,000, so it better be good, but also the fact it's light armor with a really high armor rating is amazing. And it converts hits to grazes. Okay. Uh, though now extinct, giant lizards known as Garari once roamed the many islands of the Deadfire. They were fast, powerful, and cunning predators, hated among uh, kith for their tendency to kill domestic goats and pigs if given half a chance. 
When foreign colonists arrived in the archipelago, many governors placed an open bounty on any Gerari, and the creatures were soon hunted to oblivion. Now rare due to a lack of available material, hardened Gerari leather such as this is quite desirable, as it is tough and naturally flexible. I really want it, but also we cannot afford it in any shape. We can't even sell all of our yeah, stuff and leave it to close, me. So. It, it's, it's a pipe dream that we're gonna have to remember about. But can we? We can create notes, right? There's a notes section. Can we create? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what's this area called? I'm gonna start using them. What is this area called? Delver's Row. So, Delver's Row. Amazing armor. 29,000. There you go. I'm going to start using notes because that way we can, um, yeah, amazing light armor. Yeah. So then we actually have some kind of idea about, like, things that have happened. Like, this, this might take us, like, 50 hours to come back and get this armor, but it's so good that I think it's worth it. Okay. So... Im Muani. The grizzled old Omawa woman looks as though she's been left in the sun to dry. Her skin is so worn and weathered it's hard to tell her wrinkles from her scars. You need a blade or a bludgeon or some sturdy armor? Umani has what you seek. Umani, okay. The old woman gives you a grin that multiplies the wrinkles on her face. Okay. Old Umani's stock is tested in the hands and throats of the fiercest sorts in the gullet. Never will you find a better selection. Okay. Oh, so she has two. So, uh, the Rekvu's Fractured Cask grants immortal will. What's that? Cannot be interrupted. Okay. While they carry one or more injuries. So, if you've been down once and come back up, you can't be interrupted. Interesting. This helmet once belonged to a Huana Barbarian known throughout the archipelago as... Rekvu, Dread of the in of Invaders. Local legend holds that Rekvu appeared only when her foe's situation was at its most dire. Rekvu often sustained injuries in battle that would have killed any other warrior, and yet she never died. Near the end of her life, Rekvu was pulled into battle once again, this time against a, har a, a horde of Eirton, unleashed on a quiet mining village by an opportunistic noble from a distant nation. An Aeotin, wielding a monstrous greatsword, caught Rekvu unawares in the thick of fighting and slammed her blade into Rekvu's head. Rekvu dashed the blood from her eyes and leapt on the Aeotin, knocking him to the ground. It's probably Eotin, maybe? Eotin? That kind of sounds more like it. Anyway, with one great swing of her axe, Rekvu severed both of the Aeotin's uh, heads. Um... Both of the Aeotans' heads? Are Aeotans must be like kind of an ogre thing, I'd imagine. I'm, I'm thinking like Cho'Gal from WoW. That, that's what I'm thinking when I'm see, in the saying Aeotan. Anyway. When the remaining Aeotans were slain and invading noble's arm, uh, body quartered and given to the sea, Rekfru dashed uh, the blood from her eyes and pulled off her cracked helmet, only to discover the Aeotans attack had cleaved her ear clean off. Oh, all right then. You know, things you don't notice, and then the Undying Burden, which I, I'm i sure that was in the first game, as I'm sure we used it. So it gives Athletics, it gives Second Wind, which is what Eddier has, and then Grit. Depending on weapon de incoming weapon damage reduced by 10%, increases its health, increases as health is lost for a maximum of 30% damage reduction, and gives you Constitution. Good tank item. The Durwood, uh, Durwooden Commander, Maxil Heskzin was be uh, built during the Battle of Midmarch Road, one of the opening clashes of the War of Defiance. The Durwoodens fought valiantly, but their disorganized light infantry is no match for the Adirian Heavy Regiment. Overwhelmed, the rebels were killed nearly to a man. According to several Adirian soldiers, Maxel was the last to fall. Surrounded and badly wounded, he refused the Adirian Adir commander's offer for quarter. It took a dozen spears to put the rebel down. And even then, he continued to fight until he was beheaded. Okay, so that's pretty good as well. 
there anything else he sells? No. Um, I really like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take another note. We're gonna take another note. Did this not not save? Amazing armor. Pretty good. Uh, what's it? Uh, bell. Uh, Delver's. So, yeah. Delver's. Bro. There we go. Uh, what was it? 9,000. Yeah. See, late game, this is all going to pay off because what's going to happen is I'm going to go back to those notes and go, all right. So, nice I need better right armor. Where have I got it? It's it's here. A stray dog. Our animal collection grows. Algol. What name for a dog? Algol minus 20% constitution affliction duration. Okay. Interesting. Apparently, also, Algol is following you around. Any constitution affliction supplied wear off more quickly, and we regain health when we kill an enemy. But what was uh, Abraham's one for that? That's the same. Regain health when you kill an enemy. Okay. Wait, is that the same for all dogs? Maybe I'm understanding there. That's, a, that's not really the same type of dog, is it? Are the cat ones the same? Uh, I only have one cat. You see, that there, there was an issue there. Yeah. Okay, but I'm thinking it might be like you, the animal effect is the animal. Oh, is that an, that's an ogre? Okay, so it's not an Eoton. Because it has one right head. I got this. Something approaches. Crystal eating spider, cloaked elf, and an ogre. Hello. Another ogre, and then the spindle man. Uh, hey there. Oh, I know what this is. What is this kith creature? It's a vithrak. So the vithrak were um the like they lived underground and they all. Have like telepathic powers and they were really cool because of how they interact like they were all kind of neural links with each other which is interesting that we found just a singular one that's not right but they also had the power to kind of control people and uh, which might be why they've got a couple of ogres an elf and a spider next to them although the spider was kind of like the ones that they controlled a lot i think like they were also controlling miners and things in white march anyway let's see if he knows us the vithrak Talks its head and focuses its many eyes on you. Its strange companions also stare at you with an unnatural intensity. All right, yeah, the the companions are all being controlled by this fifth rack. Ugh, it's making my skin crawl. What secrets does it bring? You feel a gentle scratching in your head. Another voice speaks directly into your mind. Let us see. Let us see. The fifth rack clicks its claws together in delight. Keep your weather eye open, Cam. A fork probe ain't much to worry over, but I'll be a two-headed ogre if that's the only trick up them silk sleeves. Seraphin scrutinizes the Vithrak. Meanwhile, the Vithrak scrabbles and slithers deeper into your mind. You know what? Go ahead. I have nothing to hide. The Vithrak reaches further into your mind, plucking and plicking at your memories. Oh, Watcher. The Deerwood. The Wasteland of the White that wins. Absolutely fine. And is that because we're a pale elf? Yeah, pretty much. I'll wait. A death, a life, a wide sea, stirred by storms and pirates and... Aethus's giant, glowing head surfaces in your mind. Ah, a wonderful secret. You hear the fifth rat clack and rub its mandibles together, remind you of a glutton licking its lips. I don't trust this creature at all. He eyes the fifth rat and looks towards the exit. The creature's probing psyche traces a question in your mind. His strange companion stand perfectly still, waiting. What are you doing here? In a gullet. We dig. There are many mines here with many secrets, many depths with even more. A city under a city. Another in the ruins. It teems with young secrets, rivalries and betrayals. We seek the older secrets buried deeper and cold.
carved on weathered stone. Will you tell me a secret? Yes. You have been generous with us. The ogre nods. Uh, the ogres nod slowly. There is a place below the slums, old, cold, and abandoned, where the city swallows those it wishes forgotten. But this place was once part of the city. So was its temple, a site holy to the goddess of distant, forgotten things. Its eyes gleam. So it's Temple of Andra is where this place is. Okay, or that is what this place is, Temple of Andra. Interesting. I need supplies. What does he sell? So he sells his grimoire. Okay. Um, it's got some int it's just got some new spells. I'm not too worried about that. Any spells we want, we can get on level up. Sit. Sis. What's that? Sisyphos stone. Okay, minus two percent action speed to attacker for 35 seconds when we're hitting melee. Doesn't sound too good. Anyway, as a punishment for his crimes, the mage and mass murderer Sifiso, Sifiso was uh, condemned by the Committee of Upright Study, but uh, spared execution due to unfavorable political repercussions. Instead, he was imprisoned and sentenced to endlessly levitate a large stone above his head while alchemical potions eliminated his need for food, drink, or sleep. While the Leviathan demanded nothing from a sissy foe physically, it was mentally exhausting. Levitation. Why did I say Leviathan? Anyway, after many years of torment, Sifiso's sister, the insane wizard Lekala, stormed the prison and set her brother free by driving the mythic wedge of Wift into the stone, shattering it. She and Sifiso Sefiso escaped to continue their uh, mad reign of terror and uh, destruction, but not before collecting a shard of the stone. This amulet was uh, made from that shard. Oh, so it's obviously re referencing the myth of that person with the um, stone that rolls up the hill. Obviously. Uh, Sephesis? I think? It kind of makes sense. Anyway. What's obsidian lamp figurine? Summons shades. Oh, okay. Ring of regeneration? A simple wire ring is forged from living iron. It contains a small well of healing soul energy. Seems alright. It's not too good. Like one fifth of Edir's level zero talent. And the white witch mask. Okay, so this one. Ability activated when he were becomes bloodied. Uh, so that would be the look not upon. So bloodied is when they're 50% health between 50 and 25 percent so they get this repulsive visage which is just an, a thing they get two per rest it gives sickened and terrified um also grants the ever uh, innovating terror okay like so weaken and terrified then fearful geometries plus two to all illusion power levels oh so it gives you them and gives you the ability to cast them it's said to be a mask of Bad Sajuka, an evil Delimpegua of the Nasik uh, myth. According to legend, she would often lure children from the safety of their villages into the woods. There, she would confound their minds and causing them to become lost and frightened. As her victims wandered further into her domain, B Basuchika would fill their hearts with ever increasing dread. Eventually, she would reveal herself. Her terrible face concealed beneath a mask of leaves barking on the dying things. When the child, terrified beyond sanity, could endure no more, Basuyuka could, uh, would lower her mask, revealing her true visage. Her victims, it was said, then died of fright. Interesting. Nothing I'm too excited to get back to here, but... Yeah, interesting. What else have we got in this area? Not too much. It does appear to be like a shopping area, but it's a cool shopping area. Oh, these guys aren't blocking the path. Back up. No shops this way, stranger. I guess they are blocking the path. The thug holds up a surprising holds up surprisingly smooth hand stepping in front of you. Surprisingly smooth tells me that he is kind of a um like he's more of a show than an action kind of person. He's showing that he's strong because he's big and tough, but the hands being smooth, that says he's not doing a lot of work. Also probably means he's quite well off. 
means he's working for somebody else who's quite well off. Anyway, what are you guarding? You think I'm standing here so I can tell you about it? Come on, go! He flicks his fingers in a shooting motion. His nails shine in the torchlight. Again, yeah, well groomed. How do I get permission to pass? <sighs> That's up to Dario. He drums his long nails against his hip. hip. Alright, see you later. Who's Dario? None of them. Right here. We met a Dario yet? I don't think so. I was trying to think where else we could go here. And there's those... No, no Dario. Well, I guess we'll leave. Leave it to me. And we may come back later. That's about the best I got there. Dario. The real? Hmm. No idea. Although what I should do is continue with our note taking. So, Dario, and we're looking for Delver's, uh, Delver's Row. I'll get this right. Right. Um, I uh, need, I really hope I remember to look at this. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this before episodes just to go like, yep, I can do this, need permission. Uh, to pass. There we go. Perfect. Note taking is fantastically useful. Right. So we actually we were we were in the middle of exploring. So let's explore the narrows. So we want to go left here because that takes us along the path that we were on. Okay. A tunnel opens to your right. Rats squeak and skitter away from your approach. The way before you corkscrews into darkness. Go forward. You make your way forward, feeling the walls to guide yourself in the darkness. Your hands come away slimy. You smell something foul further down the tunnel. The stench of loosed bowels and the metallic tang of blood. At the end of the tunnel, you find a body slumped against the wall. Stab wounds rend the corpse's clothes and flesh, and its arms and knees twist at unnatural angles. Let's search the body. Of course we're going to do it. You find a secret compartment sewn into the lining of his trousers. It contains a small note and a handful of coins. Read the note. Ulog, there's a new shipment for your Rapauru friends waiting near the lift to Delver's Row. Come get the food before the cave stink rots it. Your mad captain, Marina. Give the old man my regards. I put an extra koi key in there just for him. Yes, yes. Don't say I never done nothing, anything nice. All right, so um, the there are people smuggling in food for the, for this guy. Okay, and it's for a captain of a ship. Okay, we, and we got the dead man's note. At the end of the tunnel, you find a body slump. Yeah, we already read that one. Turn around. So we want to go left because that's the first opening. And that takes us out here. Okay, that's fine. Blow the narrows. Go left. Go right? Yeah. The stone floor is littered with fish bones and bread crusts and stamped with footprints in all shapes and sizes. Voices echo down the passage ahead of you. Go forward. The passage opens into a large cavern. Below you, ramshackle buildings crowd together like broken teeth. A maze of streets winds between them, some barely wide enough for two to pass abreast. And yet throngs of people fill the narrow streets and tiny plazas, the voices rising with the smoke of hundreds of torches. Let's explore the neighborhood. You pick your way down the worn, uneven stairs and descend into the hubbub below. Huana men, women and children surround you, all laughing, haggling, quarreling over one another. You notice a few foreign faces, Valians, Adirians and even a few Rarotaeans slipping through the crowd. A heady mixture of frying fish, unwashed bodies, and accumulated refuge permeates the air. You come across a corner where a pair of thugs, a man and a woman, have surrounded a Huana man. He has a pot belly and nervous expression, and he's backed himself as far into the corner as he can. The thugs advance. It's exchange. You pay us, and we don't hurt you. Okay. Um... Let, 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 let's try and shame him. Robbing a man who has nothing. Have you no shame? The two thugs look at each other. Can't afford it. 
But maybe our friend can help me out. He ter turned back to the cowering Hoana. You're swept away by a sudden crowd before you can do more. Oh no! Continue exploring. Come across a Roparu man and woman sitting on a rooftop, watching the activity below. They're passing a pipe back and forth and talking quietly. He gnaws the end of the pipe nervously. My neighbor has disappeared near the Undercroft weeks ago. She shrugs. All with smugglers and pirates lurking there. Ah, some of them turned to slaven. He nods, taking a puff. That's why I, that's why I stay away from Delva's rule. Plenty of bad sports there. She holds out her hand for the pipe. I care, but they are the only sorts who pay. They lapse into silence, smoking peacefully. Alright, continue exploring. You pass a busy stall where a man uh, serves muck brew and chipped shells. A rich, nutty aroma rises on plumes of steam. You hear a gasp of surprise behind you and see a small group of people huddling together, chattering. Let's listen in. An elderly man shakes his head. Any with the eyes to see, they do not build ports for our sake. Yet the queen allows their force in the city. The woman next to him plucks. Avreka, the palace is so high, even her head is in the clouds. Another man shrugs. At least the Rarotaeans will drive the other foreigners away. They make too much trouble for the other tribes. Then they flee and crowd us here. The others murmur in agreement. Or you can hear more. The teeming masses sweep you further down the street. Continue exploring. You find yourself in the middle of a shop-lined street. Packed shoulder to shoulder with people around you. You can barely move. But you know how pickpockets operate. You keep your hands over your valuables. As passers-by brush against you, you feel a hand reach for your purse. You grab its wrist and pull the thief towards you. For you as a Huana child, her eyes are wide with terror. We can teach the child a better technique. Um, no, I think we're just going to let him go. Actually, you know what? Maybe we'll teach him a better technique. We'll feel sorry for them this time. He's worried at first, but she slowly draws closer as she watches your quick practice movements. With your encouragement, she mimics your deft maneuver. She does quite well. She thanks you with a mischievous smile and turns to go. The child disappears among the crowd. Alright, continue exploring. Nothing of relevance catches your attention at this time. Alright, let's return to the Narrows. Maybe there's a time where we need to go down there. So, go forward. Go left. Go forward. Go left. The floor is around the entrance is splattered with something as thick and dark as tar. It looks like Sveth. Okay, so that's, uh... Sveth can be traced back to provisioners in the Valian Republics where the markets for the plant in question enjoy rapidly rising demand. Most commonly chewed or inhaled, Sveth is famous, infamous for the near catatonic state in which it often places its adherents. Those who use it claim the drug gives them a sense of urgency and meaning, lost when the effects fade. More colourful accounts claim that the drug allows one to look within themselves and witness the, uh, the sight of their own soul. Anyway, let's go in. A handful of guards emerge and block your way. One of them spits a vicious blob, a viscous uh, black blob at your feet. He pulls a dark plug beneath his teeth. Better head back, friend. It's invitation only past here. Alright. Well, I'm going in. We're, we're obviously going right in here. It didn't give us a diplomatic option, so... Okay. I guess we're being non-diplomatic. This is a really bad start for us because it started us the wrong way around. So, you head back. You head back. You head forward. Oh god, these, these guys are skull level 2. You head back. Eddie, head forward. Get that knocked down. Zoti. Um, I don't know what I want you to do. Hit, hit him for just now and we'll figure it out. Go, 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 go. We took some damage. I think this is the perfect opportunity for an empower. We're empowering a, fire, a fireball right there. Ah, thick word of that rough. Fireball's by far our best one, I think. Uh, strike the... Well, we could make ourselves so we can't attack. Oh, we can't be attacked. Untargetable. Maybe not necessary right now. Uh, Seraphin, go off to the side a little bit. Um, 
You don't have any spells. We well, do have a charm. Whisper of Treason, that bruiser? It doesn't look like he's going to be in here. We'll take a step over here. Does everybody get one in power, or is, the one, is one in power per everybody? I think it's one in power per everybody, but we'll see. Uh, Zoti, hold off a second. Right, we're good. Uh, we're going to need to switch to our weapon set one, and we're going to have to get that cover. Never mind. Back off. And we're pretty good. And we're very good, in fact. Uh, Zoti, you uh, empower your holy radiance. That seems perfect, right? Uh, we'll switch back to our bow, continuing to be amazingly useful. Right, and then... Then we'll just attack, I think. And that I'll teach through. you a lesson! You got anything for us yet? No, you don't. Okay, attack that one. My lantern flickers. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, you still don't have anything. That's fine. A law? Anything we can do here? Uh, do a rolling flame. That's guaranteed to hit two of uh, one of ours if we do it though. But this one, minor, it does the target one does damage. But this lava will be on seek. Yeah. We'll hit that one. I might use our empower, and maybe we're going too much on the empower. But I think I'm going to try and hit their healer in the back. Yeah, that was good. Uh, heal, Eddier. I think I'm going to try and... Well, where is Ed here? Use him on that thug. Who are you attacking? Attack this one. Right, go. I to an end. I yeah. want to go down, so we try this. There's something you don't see. Nice. That, that, did, that did all right. Uh, Aloth, you're, you're getting a little bit caught there. We use his lightning attack. Sends uh, uh, you in there. Oh, he is using his... Oh, he's using his melee stuff anyway. Yeah, Oh, they knitted me, Cap. Nice. Okay, uh, you need to be switched onto your pistol. Attack that thug. Attack Show that them how thug. it's done. Okay, that seems fine. All upon the souls that have agreed to follow you, their presence distracts all foes in the area. Oh. But it also will heal us if we need it to. I don't think we need to do that just yet. Are you attacking this one? That's fine. Oh, we did actually. I didn't even realize we actually um, did mind control that one earlier. So now in the healer. Uh, if you walk to the healer and then use into the free, I think it could work very well. Use necrotic on that one. You attack this one. You attack this one. Go. Oh, they're still netted. Lava rule beyond. I'll teach you a lesson. Not great. Oh, that worked. That was brilliant. Okay. That sorcerer. Now, what's your range in this? Well, when, when you get in range, you can use it. Never mind. Uh, hit this one. Um, use the missiles. You attack that one. Yeah, you also attack this one. Kill the bruiser as quickly as possible. Hey, I know that they're casting a we spell. Some good oh, it's not it's great. Eddier will be back up soon. Their brawler's up. Wait, that's a new one, isn't it? Uh, do you have any cipher abilities? You do. Okay, paralyze this one. Damn the lad's aim. That's fine. Oh, he's fit and strong. Eddier heal. Nice. Um, knock him over. <laughs> we got anything that we can do? Uh, we can lower his perception. Uh, I see. Let's, let's burn him. Uh, there's a chance he's going to resist the burn. Let's hit him with necrotic damage then. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, I need to be real close for that one. Uh, 
might switch to our melee weapon and go hit Show the sword. Show how it's done! Nice. Lava rule beyond... <laughs> If we can hit the sorceress, that's good. What's the half sword? Uh, penetrate armor at the cost of a lower deflection, definitely. I'll teach you. I did. I did some stuff. Okay. Got anything more? You do have some more. Soul ignition, I think, sounds good. Yeah. Ah. Me too, man. Yeah. There's a one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're doing okay. You got any more for us? Yeah, we have we have twenty still, so we can do. How about valorous echoes on uh, Eddie here? <laughs> Let's make it more strong, stronger. Better way of saying that. Uh, no, nah, let's. Keep, I'll teach you all that. We'll keep him off where he is. The loft mm -hmm. is kind of done. And that's how it's that's done. That's good. We're doing all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. This last one, uh, Eddie, hit. Really? Down. Oh what my. That was tough. We got a whole bunch of stuff from it, but that was tough. Give me a real challenge. We also got a new um, new grimoire. Okay. What I really I want to see check, though, is oh? does he get his spell? He gets his spell back every single combat. That's amazing. We did lose a bunch of our empowers there, so I'm not sure we could do that again. There's not much left in here. I'm... You know what, I'm going to end the episode here, we'll explore the rest of this next time, and then we'll explore the gullet. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.